Homelessness is the condition of people lacking a fixed, regular, and adequate nighttime residence, as defined by the McKinney-Vento Homeless Assistance Act. According to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development's annual Homeless Assessment Report, as of 2017 there were around 554,000 homeless people in the United States on a given night, or 0.17% of the population. Homelessness emerged as a national issue in the 1870s. Many homeless people lived in emerging urban cities, such as New York City. Into the 20th century, the Great Depression of the 1930s caused a devastating epidemic of poverty, hunger, and homelessness. There were two million homeless people migrating across the United States. In the 1960s, the deinstitutionalization of patients from state psychiatric hospitals, according to the physicians' medical libraries on use of pharmaceuticals, was a precipitating factor which seeded the population of people that are homeless. The number of homeless people grew in the 1980s, as housing and social service cuts increased. After many years of advocacy and numerous revisions, President Ronald Reagan signed into law the McKinney-Vento Homeless Assistance Act in 1987. This remains the only piece of federal legislation that allocates funding to the direct service of homeless people. Over the past decades, the availability and quality of data on homelessness has improved considerably. About 1.56 million people, or about 0.5% of the U.S. population, used an emergency shelter or a transitional housing program between October 1, 2008 and September 30, 2009. Homelessness in the United States increased after the Great Recession. In the year 2009, one out of 50 children or 1.5 million children in United States of America will be homeless each year. There were an estimated 57,849 homeless veterans estimated in the United States during January 2013, or 12% of all homeless adults. Just under 8% of homeless U.S. veterans are female. Texas, California and Florida have the highest numbers of unaccompanied homeless youth under the age of 18, comprising 58% of the total homeless under 18 youth population. Homelessness affects men more than women. In the United States, about 60% of all homeless adults are men. Because of turnover in the population of people that are homeless, the total number of people who experience homelessness for at least a few nights during the course of a year is thought to be considerably higher than point in time counts. A 2000 study estimated the number of such people to be between 2.3 million and 3.5 million. According to Amnesty International USA, vacant houses outnumber homeless people by five times. A December 2017 investigation by Philip Alston, the UN Special Rapporteur on Extreme Poverty and Human Rights, found that homeless persons have effectively been criminalized throughout many cities in the United States. Causes of homelessness in the United States include lack of affordable housing, divorce, lawful eviction, negative cash flow, post traumatic stress disorder, foreclosure, fire, natural disasters, hurricane, earthquake, or flood, mental illness, physical disability, having no family or supportive relatives, substance abuse, lack of needed services, elimination of pen pensions and unemployment entitlements, no or inadequate income sources such as social security, stock dividends, or annuity, poverty, no net worth, gambling, unemployment, and low-paying jobs. Homelessness in the United States affects many segments of the population, including families, children, domestic violence victims, ex-convicts, veterans, and the aged. Efforts to assist the homeless include federal legislation, nonprofit efforts, increased access to health care services, supportive housing, and affordable housing. Topic. Historical background Pre-colonial and colonial periods Following the Peasants' Revolt in England, constables were authorized under 1383 English Poor Laws Statute to collar vagabonds and force them to show support. If they could not, the penalty was jail. Vagabonds could be sentenced to the stocks for three days and nights. In 1530, whipping was added. The presumption was that vagabonds were unlicensed beggars. In 1547, a bill was passed that subjected vagrants to some of the more extreme provisions of the criminal law, namely two years' servitude and branding with a V. as the penalty for the first offense and death for the second. Large numbers of vagabonds were among the convicts transported to the American colonies in the 18th century. <inaudible> <inaudible> Urbanization 
Homelessness emerged as a national issue in the 1870s. There are no national figures documenting homeless people demography at this time. Jacob Rees wrote about, documented, and photographed the poor and destitute, although not specifically homeless people, in New York City tenements in the late 19th century. His groundbreaking book, How the Other Half Lives, published in 1890, raised public awareness of living conditions in the slums, causing some changes in building codes and some social conditions. The growing movement towards social concern sparked the development of rescue missions, such as America's first rescue mission, the New York City Rescue Mission, founded in 1872 by Jerry and Maria McCauley. In smaller towns, there were hobos, who temporarily lived near train tracks and hopped onto trains to various destinations. Especially following the American Civil War, a large number of homeless men formed part of a counterculture known as Hobohemia. All over America, by the late 19th century, many American towns and cities had significant numbers of homeless people. In New York City, for example, there was an area known as the Bowery, rescue missions offering soup, soap, and salvation. A phrase introduced by the Salvation Army, sprang up along the Bowery thoroughfare, including the oldest one, the Bowery Mission. The mission was founded in 1879 by the Rev. and Mrs. A.G. Rolofson. 20th century The Great Depression of the 1930s caused a devastating epidemic of poverty, hunger, and homelessness. There were two million homeless people migrating across the United States. Many lived in shantytowns they called Hoovervilles, deriding the president they blamed for the Depression. Residents lived in shacks and begged for food or went to soup kitchens. Authorities did not officially recognize these Hoovervilles and occasionally removed the occupants for technically trespassing on private lands, but they were frequently tolerated out of necessity. A 1960 survey by Temple University of Philadelphia's Poor Neighborhoods found that 75% of the people that are homeless were over 45 years old, and 87% were white. The Community Mental Health Act of 1963 was a predisposing factor in setting the stage for homelessness in the United States. Long-term psychiatric patients were released from state hospitals into single-room occupancies and sent to community health centers for treatment and follow-up. Never adequately funded, the community mental health system struggled to meet patient needs and many of the deinstitutionalized wound up living on the streets, with no sustainable support system. In the United States, during the late 1970s, the deinstitutionalization of patients from state psychiatric hospitals was a precipitating factor which seeded population people that are homeless, especially in urban areas such as New York City. 1980s and 1990s The number of homeless people grew in the 1980s, as housing and social service cuts increased and the economy deteriorated. The United States government determined that somewhere between 200,000 and 500,000 Americans were then homeless. There were some U.S. federal initiatives that aimed to help, end and prevent homelessness, however, there were no designated homeless-related programs in the Office of Management and Budget. The history of the United States 1980 illustrates that this was a time when there was economic distress, high unemployment, and was the period when chronic homelessness became a societal problem. In 1980, federal funds accounted for 22% of big city budgets, but by 1989 the similar aid composed only 6% of urban revenue part of a larger 60% decrease in federal spending to support local governments. It is largely although not exclusively, in these urban areas that homelessness became widespread and reached unprecedented numbers. Most notable were cuts to federal low-income housing programs. An advocacy group claims that Congress have the budget for public housing and Section 8 the government's housing voucher subsidization program and that between the years of 1980 and 1989 HUD's budget authority was reduced from $74 billion to $19 billion. Such alleged changes is claimed to have resulted in an inadequate supply of affordable housing to meet the growing demand of low-income populations. In 1970 there were 300,000 more low-cost rental units 6.5 million than low-income renter households 6.2 million. 
By 1985, the advocacy group claimed that the number of low-cost units had fallen to 5.6 million, and the number of low-income renter households had grown to 8.9 million, a disparity of 3.3 million units. In response to the ensuing homelessness crisis of the 1980s, concerned citizens across the country demanded that the federal government provide assistance. After many years of advocacy and numerous revisions, President Reagan signed into law the McKinney-Vento Homeless Assistance Act in 1987. This remains the only piece of federal legislation that allocates funding to the direct service of homeless people. The McKinney-Vento Act paved the way for service providers in the coming years. During the 1990s homeless shelters, soup kitchens, and other supportive services sprouted up in cities and towns across the nation. However, despite these efforts and the dramatic economic growth marked by this decade, homeless numbers remained stubbornly high. It became increasingly apparent that simply providing services to alleviate the symptoms of homelessness i.e. shelter beds, hot meals, psychiatric counseling, etc., although needed, were not successful at solving the root causes of homelessness. The United States Interagency Council on Homelessness USAGE, a federal agency contained in the executive branch, was established in 1987 as a requirement of the McKinney-Vento Act of 1987. 21st century Improved data Over the past decades, the availability and quality of data on homelessness has improved considerably, due, in part, to initiatives by the United States government. Since 2007, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development has issued an annual homeless assessment report, which revealed the number of individuals and families that were homeless, both sheltered and unsheltered. In 2009, there were about 643,000 sheltered and unsheltered homeless persons nationwide. About two-thirds of those stayed in emergency shelters or used transitional housing programs, with the remaining living on the street in abandoned buildings or other areas not meant for human habitation. About 1.56 million people, or about 0.5% of the U.S. population, used an emergency shelter or a transitional housing program between October 1, 2008 and September 30, 2009. Around 44% of homeless people were employed, according to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development's 2008 Annual Homeless Assessment Report. The most common demographic features of all sheltered homeless people are, male, members of minority groups, older than age 31, and alone. More than 40% of sheltered homeless people have a disability. At the same time, sizable segments of the sheltered homeless population are white, non-Hispanic children 20%, or part of multi-person households 33%. Approximately 68% of the 1.6 million sheltered homeless people were homeless as individuals and 32% were persons in families. In 2008, more than 66% of all sheltered homeless people were located in principal cities, with 32% located in suburban or rural jurisdictions. About 40% of people entering an emergency shelter or transitional housing program during 2008 came from another homeless situation sheltered or unsheltered, 40% came from a housed situation in their own or someone else's home, and the remaining 20% were split between institutional settings or other situations such as hotels or motels. Most people had relatively short lengths of stay in emergency shelters, 60% stayed less than a month, and a 33% stayed a week or less. Topic. Causes In 2004 the United States Conference of Mayors surveyed the mayors of major cities on the extent and causes of urban homelessness and most of the mayors named the lack of affordable housing as a cause of homelessness. The next three causes identified by mayors, in rank order, were mental illness or the lack of needed services, substance abuse and lack of needed services, and low-paying jobs. The lowest ranking cause, cited by five mayors, was prisoner re-entry. Other causes cited were unemployment, domestic violence, and poverty. The major causes of homelessness include the failure of urban housing projects to provide safe, secure, and affordable housing to the poor. Additionally, many workers cannot afford to live where they work, and even in moderately priced communities housing costs require a large portion of household income. 
The deinstitutionalization movement from the 1950s onwards in state mental health systems, to shift towards community-based treatment of the mentally ill, as opposed to long-term commitment in institutions. There is disproportionately higher prevalence of mental disorders relative to other disease groups within homeless patient populations at both inpatient hospitals and hospital-based emergency departments. Redevelopment and gentrification activities instituted by cities across the country through which low-income neighborhoods are declared blighted and demolished to make way for projects that generate higher property taxes and other revenue, creating a shortage of housing affordable to low-income working families, the elderly poor, and the disabled. The failure of the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs to provide effective mental health care and meaningful job training for many homeless veterans, particularly those of the Vietnam War. Nearly half of foster children in the United States become homeless when they are released from foster care at age 18. Natural disasters that destroy homes, hurricanes, floods, earthquakes, etc. Places of employment are often destroyed too, causing unemployment and transience. People who have served time in prison, have abused drugs and alcohol, or have a history of mental illness find it difficult to find employment for years at a time because of the use of computer background checks by potential employers. Also inclusive of registered sex offenders who are considered unwelcome in some metropolitan areas. See Prisoner Reentry. According to the Institution of Housing in 2005, the U.S. government has focused 42% more on foreign countries rather than homeless Americans, including homeless veterans. People who are hiding in order to evade law enforcement. Adults and children who flee domestic violence. Teenagers who flee or are thrown out by parents who disapprove of their child's sexual orientation or gender identity. A 2010 study by the Center for American Progress shows that a disproportionately high number of homeless youth between 20 to 40 percent identify as LGBTQ. Overly complex building code that makes it difficult for most people to build. Traditional huts, cars, and tents are illegal, classified as substandard and may be removed by government, even though the occupant may own the land. Land owner cannot live on the land cheaply, and so sells the land and becomes homeless. Foreclosures of homes, including foreclosure of apartment complexes which displaces tenants renting there. Evictions from rented property. Lack of support from friends or family. Individuals who prefer homelessness and wish to remain off the grid for political and ideological purposes. Often self-identified as gutter punks or urban survivalists. The Department of Housing and Urban Development rarely reports on this counter-cultural movement since gutter punks and similar individuals often refuse to participate in governmental studies and do not seek governmental assistance for ideological or political purposes. Lack of resources in place in the communities to help aid in prevention of homelessness before it becomes a crisis. Neoliberal reforms to the welfare state and the retrenchment of the social safety net, causes could include mental illness, addiction, disenfranchised individuals, poor self-confidence and or by individual freedom of choice. Another cause is temporary unemployment and or temporary unaffordable housing in a variety of geographical locations. Topic. Federal legislation in response to the Great Recession in the United States, President Obama signed several pieces of legislation that addressed the homelessness crisis. The American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009 addressed homelessness prevention, in which he allocated an additional $1.5 billion to HUD for the Homelessness Prevention and Rapid Rehousing Program HPRP. The purpose of HPRP was to assist individuals and families who are otherwise healthy and not chronically homeless in escaping homelessness or preventing homelessness of the vulnerable population. On May 20, 2009, President Obama signed the Homeless Emergency Assistance and Rapid Transition to Housing Hearth Act into Public Law Public Law 111-22 or Place 111-22, reauthorizing HUD's homeless assistance programs. It was part of the Helping Families Save Their Homes Act of 2009. The Hearth Act allows for the prevention of homelessness, rapid rehousing, consolidation of housing programs, and new homeless categories. In the first year of the new decade, the federal government launched of Opening Doors, the federal strategic plan to prevent and end homelessness. Opening Doors is a publication of the U.S. 
Interagency Council on Homelessness, which worked with all federal agencies and many state and local stakeholders on its creation and vision, setting a 10-year path for the nation on preventing and ending all types of homelessness. This plan was presented to the President and Congress in a White House ceremony on June 22, 2010. A federal in September 2018 ruled that cities can't punish homeless people for sleeping in public when the homeless shelters are full. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Continued crisis. According to the U.S. Conference of Mayors, the demand for emergency shelter in 270 U.S. cities increased 13% in 2001 and 25% in 2005. 22% of those requesting emergency shelter were turned away. Into 2016, homelessness is considered an epidemic in several U.S. cities. Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti and seven of the 15 city council members announced they would declare a state of emergency and try to find $100 million to cure what has become a municipal curse. Homelessness in New York City has tripled since January 2000, from approximately 20,000 people using provided nightly shelter services to more than 60,000 in January 2015. These counts do not include those persons who choose to stay away from shelter providers. Topic. Definitions and categories The United States Department of Housing and Urban Development acknowledges four categories of people who qualify as legally homeless, one, those who are currently homeless, two, those who will become homeless in the imminent future, three, certain youths and families with children who suffer from home instability caused by a hardship, and four, those who suffer from home instability caused by domestic violence. According to the Stuart B. McKinney Act, 42 U.S.C. § 11301, et seq., 1994, a person is considered homeless if they lack a fixed, regular, and adequate nighttime residence and has a primary nighttime residency that is, a, a supervised publicly or privately operated shelter designed to provide temporary living accommodations, b, an institution that provides a temporary residence for individuals intended to be institutionalized, or c, a public or private place not designed for, or ordinarily used as, a regular sleeping accommodation for human beings. Human Rights Watch 2010 identified emancipated teenagers in California as a new homeless population. Topic. Homeless veterans Homeless veterans are persons who have served in the armed forces who are homeless or living without access to secure and appropriate accommodation. There were an estimated 57,849 homeless veterans estimated in the United States during January 2013, or 12% of all homeless adults. Just under 8% of homeless U.S. veterans are female. Throughout the 21st century, homeless service providers and the federal government have been able to reduce chronic homelessness and homelessness among veterans with targeted efforts and interagency cooperation on initiatives like the HUD VOSH program. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Youth homelessness. The number of homeless children in the US grew from 1.2 million in 2007 to 1.6 million in 2010. The U.S. defines homelessness as individuals who lack a fixed, regular, and adequate nighttime residence. Per McKinney-Vento Homeless Assistance Act. The number of homeless children reached record highs in 2011, 2012, and 2013 at about three times their number in 1983. An estimated 2 million youth run away from or are forced out of their homes each year. In the United States. The difference in these numbers can be attributed to the temporary nature of street children in the United States, unlike the more permanent state in developing countries. One out of 50 children or 1.5 million children in United States of America will be homeless each year. In 2013 that number jumped to 1 out of 30 children, or 2.5 million. Texas, California and Florida have the highest numbers of unaccompanied homeless youth under the age of 18, comprising 58% of the total homeless under 18 youth population. Street children in the United States tend to stay in the state, 83% do not leave their state of origin. If they leave, street children are likely to end up in large cities, notably New York City, Los Angeles, Portland, Oregon, and San Francisco. 
Street children are predominantly Caucasian and female in the United States, and 42% identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender (LGBT). The United States government has been making efforts since the late 1970s to accommodate this section of the population. The Runaway and Homeless Youth Act of 1978 made funding available for shelters and funded the National Runaway Switchboard. Other efforts include the Child Abuse and Treatment Act of 1974, the National Child Abuse and Neglect Data System, and the Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Act. There has also been a decline of arrest rates in street youth, dropping in 30,000 arrests from 1998 to 2007. Instead, the authorities are referring homeless youth to state-run social service agencies. Topic. College youth. College youth that are homeless account for over 1 million of the young homeless population. According to the Free Application Federal Student Aid, also known as FAFSA, in 2013, over 58,000 students identified as homeless on their application. The federal government defines these unaccompanied homeless youth UHY as individuals who do not have fixed, regular and adequate housing and who are not in the physical custody of a parent or adult, the McKinney-Vento Act is considered the key piece of federal legislation pertaining to educational support for homeless children and teens. The causes of homelessness varies from student to student. There are two types of homeless college students, one, students that are homeless upon entering college and two, students who become homeless during college. For the youth that become homeless upon entering college, this situation represents the students that are having trouble sustaining housing due to job loss of their parent or guardian, the lack of a parent or guardian or because youth has been asked to leave the home or decided to run away. The reasons for a college youth to become homeless while attending college are as follows, unable to sustain the financial expenses for housing and food. Secondly, by having the financial support given by family revoked. Fortunately, there are programs available at state colleges and universities that provide students with the necessary resources to obtain financial and housing stability and sustainability. There are also organizations such as the National Association for the Education of Homeless Children and Youth that advocate for a higher education so the children and youth can fulfill their dreams. Another innovative model that can be of great help to college students experiencing homelessness is Single Stop USA, which operates in community colleges to help connect low-income students to the resources they need, including housing, to not only stay in school but to excel. Topic. LGBT youth Research shows that a disproportionate number of homeless youth in the United States identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual or transgender, or LGBT. Researchers suggest that this is primarily a result of hostility or abuse from the youth's families leading to eviction or running away. In addition, LGBT youth are often at greater risk for certain dangers while homeless, including being the victims of crime, risky sexual behavior, substance abuse, and mental health concerns. LGBT homeless youth experience limited access to emergency housing options that affirm their sexual orientation and or gender identity, and according to a note for the Family Court Review recommending policies regarding such housing options, as many as 50% of LGBT youth in emergency housing programs may be physically assaulted, a proportion further exacerbated at large shelters that house 200 or more youth. In addition, homeless youth emergency housing programs may lead to the denial of services to LGBT youth under the religious aspects of this orientation of the individuals. Topic. Homeless families The topic of homeless families first emerged in the United States during the 1980s when social welfare programs were being cut and high rates of income equality, child poverty, and the lack of affordable housing were becoming an issue. The issue of homeless families came back in 2009 after the recession, which replicated the same issues from the 80s. The 2000s saw a new population of those experiencing homelessness, families with children. While an emerging problem at the beginning of the decade, the problem continued to persist through 2010. At the close of the decade the trend continued unabated, with the number of individuals in homeless families increasing from 431,541 in 2007 to 535,447 in 2009. 
In 2011, the National Center of Homelessness unveiled statistics of a study they operated that ranked the United States number one with the most homeless families among other progressive countries. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Homeless women with children. Another study discovered that the three biggest risk factors that contributed to family homelessness in the United States are ethnicity, lack of resources, specifically funds, and young children pregnancy. There is also a strong correlation between homeless families and households run and financed by a single female, especially one from a minority group and with at least two children. Single income families, especially those below the federal poverty line, have a harder time finding housing than other families, especially given the limited affordable housing options. Homeless families do not always take refuge in shelters, but being homeless also does not necessarily mean living on the streets. Homeless women with children are more likely to live with family or friends than those without children, and this group is treated with higher priority by both the government and society. This can be seen through shelters exclusively serving women with children. <laughs> Efforts to assist homeless people The community of homeless people in the United States is aided by governmental and non-governmental organizations. According to the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, in 2017, the number of people experiencing homelessness in unsheltered locations increased for a second straight year by 9% between 2016 and 2017 This issue is partly caused by a lack of affordable housing and is exasperated by the criminalization of behaviors associated with homelessness. This problem is also costly for the country in supporting these individuals. Multiple studies have demonstrated success in reducing the homeless population as well as its harmful financial and societal effects by providing these individuals with a combination of housing without preconditions and supportive care. These studies include the 2014 Housing First implementation of the Department of Veterans Affairs National Center on Homelessness Among Veterans and a study performed through Brown University. If these methods were adopted nationwide, there is a chance that the United States could be successful in reintegrating a greater percentage of the homeless into society than ever before. Topic. Housing Homeless individuals report a lack of affordable housing as the number one reason for becoming homeless. Many nonprofit organizations are in operation to serve this need. For example, the National Low Income Housing Coalition, but most lack the funding necessary to create enough housing. Several proposed policy measures are designed to secure such funding, such as the National Housing Trust Fund, but these have not been signed into law. The two main types of housing programs provided for homeless people are transitional and permanent housing. Transitional housing programs are operated with one goal in mind, to help individuals and families obtain permanent housing as quickly as possible. Transitional housing programs assist homeless for a fixed amount of time or until they are able to obtain housing on their own and function successfully in the community, or whichever comes first. Some shelters and associated charitable foundations have bought buildings and real estate to develop into permanent housing for the homeless in lieu of transitional housing. The United States Department of Housing and Urban Development and Veterans Administration have a special Section 8 housing voucher program called VOSH, Veterans Administration Supported Housing, or HUD Vosh, which gives out a certain number of Section 8 subsidized housing vouchers to eligible homeless and otherwise vulnerable U.S. Armed Forces veterans. The HUD Vosh program has been successful in housing many homeless veterans. Housing First has met with success since its initial implementations in 2009 by providing relatively no strings attached housing to homeless people with substance abuse problems or mental health issues. Housing First allows homeless men and women to be taken directly off the street into private community-based apartments, without requiring treatment first. This allows the homeless to return to some sense of normalcy, from which it is believed that they are better poised to tackle their addictions or sicknesses. The relapse rate through these types of programs is lower than that of conventional homeless programs. Housing First was initiated by the federal government's Interagency Council on Homelessness. It asks cities to come up with a plan to end chronic homelessness under the assumption that if homeless people are given independent housing immediately with some social and financial support, then there will be reduced needs for emergency homeless shelters. CBS MoneyWatch reported in July 2018 that the number of U.S. citizens residing in their vehicles because they can't find affordable housing has 
exploded particularly in cities with steep increases in the cost of living such as Los Angeles, Portland and San Francisco. Topic: <laughs> Comprehensive health care. Homeless individuals report mental illness as being the number 3 reason for becoming or staying homeless. Such illnesses are often closely linked with the fourth reason, substance abuse and therefore it is generally accepted that both of these issues should be treated simultaneously. Although many medical, psychiatric, and counseling services exist to address these needs, it is commonly believed that without the support of reliable and stable housing such treatments remain ineffective. Furthermore, in the absence of a universal health care plan, many of those in need cannot afford such services. Proposed legislation such as the Bringing America Home Act are intended to provide comprehensive treatment for many homeless mental and substance abuse patients. Topic: Policies. There are several policies dealing with homelessness. In 1980, the government decided to start sending funding to people that are homeless, but it was not until 1984 that shelters were built to accommodate and feed them. As it was shown though 70% required homeless people to attend a religious ceremony and spend only a couple of nights there. In the 1987 McKinney Act the problem with homelessness became known as a huge social problem. Later on, the No Child Left Behind Act of 2001 PL 107 amended the program explicitly to prohibit states that receive McKinney-Vento funds from segregating homeless students from non-homeless students, except for short periods of time for health and safety emergencies or to provide temporary, special, supplementary services. The Chronic Homelessness Initiative the George W. Bush administration established a national goal of ending chronic homelessness in 10 years, by 2012. The idea of a 10-year plan to end chronic homelessness began as a part of a 10-year plan to end homelessness in general adopted by the National Alliance to End Homelessness in 2000. The following year, then-Secretary Martinez announced HUD's commitment to ending chronic homelessness at the NAEH annual conference. In 2002, as a part of his FY2003 budget, President Bush made ending chronic homelessness in the next decade a top objective. The bipartisan, congressionally mandated, Millennial Housing Commission, in its report to Congress in 2002, included ending chronic homelessness in 10 years among its principal recommendations. By 2003, the Interagency Council on Homelessness had been re-engaged and charged with pursuing the President's 10-year plan. The administration has recently undertaken some collaborative efforts to reach its goal of ending chronic homelessness in 10 years. On October 1, 2003, the administration announced the award of over $48 million in grants aimed at serving the needs of the chronically homeless through two initiatives. The Ending Chronic Homelessness Through Employment and Housing initiative was a collaborative grant offered jointly by HUD and the Department of Labor the initiative offered $10 million from HUD and $3.5 million from Dahl to help the chronically homeless in five communities gain access to employment and permanent housing. Section 8 is the core housing program that helps extremely low-income families accommodate the gap between their incomes below 30% of the median income for each community. The government assists homeless families by awarding grants and vouchers. Vouchers are available to the families who are most needy and they are used to pay for housing found in the private market. Currently there are policy changes in who receives vouchers and there will be a reduction in the number of vouchers granted to the population of people that are homeless. Topic. Public libraries Public libraries can and often do significantly assist with the issues presented by homelessness. In many communities, the library is the only facility that offers free computer and internet access, so this is where many people experiencing homelessness go to locate services for basic needs such as healthcare, education, and housing. Libraries computers are also necessary for building a resume, searching for open jobs in the area, and completing job applications. The news article and video entitled, SF Library Offers Social Services to Homeless speaks about the San Francisco Library having a full-time social worker at the library to reduce and help homeless patrons. It mentions that Leah Isguera, who is a psychiatric social worker, has a usual routine which is done by making her rounds to different homeless patrons and greeting them to see if she could help them. 
She offers help in different forms that could range from linking patrons with services or providing them with mental health counseling. She also supervises a 12-week vocational program that culminates in gainful employment in the library for the formerly homeless night, 2010. The changes have garnered positive results from all patrons. Since this service started, staff at the library stated that they have noticed a drop in inappropriate behavior. The addition of social workers in the library has multiple benefits as they can assist with issues such as education, emergency services, food, clothing, housing, and crisis support, employment, family matters, health improvement including health insurance, immigration, and support groups for men, women, and teens. The San Jose University Library became one of the first academic libraries to pay attention to the needs of homeless people and implement changes to better serve this population. In 2007, the merged university library and public library made the choice to be proactive in reaching out. Collaborations with non-profit organizations in the area culminated in computer classes being taught, as well as nutrition classes, family literacy programs, and book discussion groups. After 18 months, the library staff felt they still were not doing enough and analyzed program participation trends supplemented by observation and anecdotes in order to better understand the information needs of homeless people. When it was understood that these needs are complex, additional customer service training was provided to all staff who were interested. Once the staff more fully understood the needs of homeless people, it was determined that many programs in place already, with a few minor adjustments, would be helpful to homeless people. Programs were tailored to meet these needs. Additional changes implemented included temporary computer passes and generous in-house reading space to counteract the policies in place that may prevent a homeless person from obtaining a library card. New York Public Library offers services to homeless people that are residing in shelters. The Dallas Public Library started Coffee and Conversation, which is part of their Homeless Engagement Initiative. The staff hopes these bi-monthly events between staff and homeless patrons will help them better serve the homeless people population in Dallas. They also sponsor Street View Podcast, a library-produced podcast featuring the stories and experiences of the city's homeless population. Guests often include social service providers. In May 1991, Richard Kramer, a homeless man in Morristown, NJ sued the local public library and the town of Morristown for kicking him out of the library after other patrons complained about his disruptive behavior and pungent body odor. He later won the case and settled for $250,000. <laughs> effects of homelessness The McKinney-Vento Homeless Assistance Act Homelessness has a tremendous effect on a child's education. Education of homeless youth is thought to be essential in breaking the cycle of poverty. The McKinney-Vento Homeless Assistance Act mandates equal opportunity to a free public education to homeless students. This act is supposed to break down the barriers homeless students have to receiving an education. These barriers include residency restriction, medical record verification, and transportation issues. Once a student surpasses these barriers, they are still subject to the stigma of being homeless, and the humiliation they feel because of their situation. Some families do not report their homelessness, while others are unaware of the opportunities available to them. Many report that maintaining a stable school environment helps the students because it's the only thing that remains normal. Many homeless students fall behind their peers in school due to behavioral disorders, and lack of attendance in school. Since the United States housing bubble collapse, there has been a rise in the number of homeless students. NAEHCY or the National Association for the Education of Homeless for Children and Youth, has reported a 99% increase in homeless students within a three-month period San Diego, of 1,636 schools, 330 reported no increase, 847 reported an increase of half, and 459 reported an increase of 25% or more. Due to underfunding many school districts are struggling to provide the necessary services to support homeless students, as mandated in the provisions of the McKinney-Vento Act, such as rising transportation needs and the greater range and usefulness of services. Wisconsin Rapids Public Schools Homeless Liaison Heather Lasitza says, One of the biggest challenges our district faces is providing transportation to students who are experiencing homelessness. There are few approaches that our district can utilize to provide transportation for these students. 
Our city has only one taxi cab service and no public bus system. Our cab company is small and simply cannot fulfill all of our transportation requests. When it's possible, we add students to existing bus routes or set up a contractual agreement with the student's parent, guardian. However, there have been many situations where none of these options have worked. Another challenge our district faces is providing proper outer wear for students who are homeless. Being that we live in central Wisconsin and have long, cold winters, all students need proper outerwear to go outside. Proper outerwear includes snow boots, hat, mittens, snow pants, and a winter jacket that has a working zipper or buttons on it. This expense adds up quickly and is hard to provide to the increasing number of homeless students. This is especially worrisome since homeless students are 1 1.5 times more likely to perform below grade level in reading, 2 1.5 times more likely to perform below grade level in spelling, and 3 2.5 times more likely to perform below grade level in math. There are a few worries that there will be false reports of homeless students, but mostly it's not an issue. Topic. Criminalization Various laws have both directly and indirectly criminalized people that are homeless and people attempting to feed homeless people outdoors. At least 31 cities have criminalized feeding people that are homeless. In 2014, the United Nations Human Rights Committee criticized the United States for the criminalization of homelessness, noting that such cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment is in violation of international human rights treaty obligations. Topic. Vagrancy Measures passed prohibit activities such as sleeping, camping, eating, sitting, and begging in public spaces, usually including criminal penalties for violation of these laws. Violators of such laws typically incur criminal penalties, which result in fines and or incarceration. In April 2006 the Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit ruled that making it a crime to be homeless by charging them with a crime is in violation of the Eighth and Fourteenth Amendments. Quote, However, on October 15, 2007, the Court vacated its opinion when, on appeal the parties settled the case out of court. The city could not expressly criminalize the status of homelessness by making it a crime to be homeless without violating the Eighth Amendment, nor can it criminalize acts that are an integral aspect of that status. Because there is substantial and undisputed evidence that the number of homeless persons in Los Angeles far exceeds the number of available shelter beds at all times, including on the nights of their arrest or citation, Los Angeles has encroached upon appellants' Eighth Amendment protections by criminalizing the unavoidable act of sitting, lying, or sleeping at night while being involuntarily homeless. The Eighth Amendment prohibits the city from punishing involuntary sitting, lying, or sleeping on public sidewalks that is an unavoidable consequence of being human and homeless with without shelter in the city of Los Angeles. By our decision, we in no way dictate to the city that it must provide sufficient shelter for the homeless, or allow anyone who wishes to sit, lie, or sleep on the streets of Los Angeles at any time and at any place within the city. All we hold is that, so long as there is a greater number of homeless individuals in Los Angeles than the number of available beds, the city may not enforce Section 41.18 d at all times and places throughout the city against homeless individuals for involuntarily sitting, lying, and sleeping in public. In August 2012, a federal district judge in Philadelphia ruled that laws prohibiting serving food to homeless people outdoors were unconstitutional. On June 19, 2014, the Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit struck down a 1983 ordinance in the city of Los Angeles which bans people from living in cars or recreational vehicles on city streets or in parking lots as being unconstitutionally vague. Unlike other cities, which ban overnight parking or sleeping in vehicles, Los Angeles law prohibits using cars as living quarters, both overnight and day by day, or otherwise. Homeless rights advocates are pushing for right to rest bills in several states in 2015, which would overturn laws that target homeless people for sitting, eating, and sleeping in public places. Topic crimes against homeless people Since the 1990s, there has been a growing number of violent acts committed upon people experiencing homelessness. The rate of such documented crimes in 2005 was 30% higher than of those in 1999. 75% of all perpetrators are under the age of 25. 
In recent years, largely due to the efforts of the National Coalition for the Homeless and academic researchers, the problem of violence against homeless people has gained national attention. In their report, Hate, Violence, and Death on Main Street USA, the NCH reported 386 violent acts committed against homeless persons over the period, among which 155 were lethal. The NCH called those acts hate crimes they retain the definition of the American Congress. They insist that so-called bumfight videos disseminate hate against homeless people and dehumanize them. The Center for the Study of Hate and Extremism CSHE at California State University, San Bernardino in conjunction with the NCH found that 155 homeless people were killed by non-homeless people in hate killings, while 76 people were killed in all the other traditional hate crime homicide categories such as race and religion, combined. The CSHE contends that negative and degrading portrayals of people that are homeless contribute to a climate where violence takes place. Various studies and surveys indicate that homeless people have a much higher criminal victimization rate than the non-homeless, but that most incidents never get reported to authorities. A 2007 study found that the number of violent crimes against homeless people is increasing. In 2013, there were 109 attacks on homeless people, a 24% increase on the previous year, according to the NCH. 18 people died as a result of the attacks. In July 2014, three boys 15, 16 and 18, were arrested and charged with beating to death two homeless men with bricks and a metal pole in Albuquerque. As in other countries, criminals, both individuals and organized groups, sometimes exploit homeless people, ranging from identity theft to tax and welfare scams. Homeless people, and homeless organizations, are also known to be accused or convicted of frauds and scams. These incidents often lead to negative impressions of the homeless by the general public. Topic. Health There is a bidirectional relationship between homelessness and poor health. Homelessness exacts a heavy toll on individuals and the longer individuals experience homelessness, the more likely they are to experience poor health and be at higher risk for premature death. Health conditions, such as substance abuse and mental illness, can increase people's susceptibility to homelessness. Conversely, homelessness can further cause health issues as they come with constant exposure to environmental threats such as hazards of violence and communicable diseases. Homeless people suffer from disproportionately high rates of polysubstance abuse, mental illness, physical health problems and legal issues, barriers in attaining employment. Lack of health insurance and the multiple exigencies of the homeless condition inhibit many homeless persons from receiving care. Large number of homeless people work but few homeless people are able to generate significant earnings from employment alone. Physical health problems also limit work or daily activities which are barriers to employment. Drug and alcohol abuse and dependence are positively associated with lower work level but are negatively related to higher work level. Those with physical health problems are substantially more likely than those with mental health problems to be in the more generous disability programs. Substance use disorders are also a barrier to participation in disability programs. Rates of participation in government programs are low, and people with major mental disorders have low participation rate in disability programs. Topic. Children's health There are risks to seeking refuge in shelters, which are heightened and more noticeable for children. Such risks include health problems such as malnutrition from lack of access to food with nutritional content, behavioral problems associated with coping, social insecurity from growing up in an unstable environment, and mental illnesses such as PTSD and trauma. These problems exacerbate the child's risk of underperforming in both academic and personal settings. Topic. Mother's health Just as children who come from homeless families are at a higher risk of developing behavioral, mental, and physical health problems than their peers, their mothers are also at a higher risk especially in developing mental illnesses. There are many things that contribute to why homeless women are at a higher rate of developing a mental illness compared to the general population, but there has been a reoccurring three among studies focused on this issue. First, there is constant violence in the home that the woman and her children which feeds into the bigger issue of single female lead households being prone to homelessness. 
The second reason of leaving a violent home is the experience of sexual abuse, neglection, and or death of main household provider. And thirdly, the reoccurring issue of mental illness or substance abuse. All these factors not only make women and their children more likely to become homeless, but also place homeless women at a higher risk of developing mental illnesses compared to women in the general population. Topic. Situations in specific U.S. cities and states Topic. Public attitudes Many advocates for homeless people contend that a key difficulty is the social stigma surrounding homelessness. Many associate a lack of a permanent home with a lack of a proper bathroom and limited access to regular grooming. Thus, people that are homeless become aesthetically unappealing to the general public. Research shows that physically attractive persons are judged more positively than physically unattractive individuals on various traits reflecting social competence. In addition to the physical component of stigmatization exists an association of homeless people with mental illness. Many people consider the mentally ill to be irresponsible and childlike and treat them with fear and exclusion, using their mental incapacitation as justification for why they should be left out of communities. There is anecdotal evidence that many Americans complain about the presence of homeless people, blame them for their situation, and feel that their requests for money or support, usually via begging, are unjustified. In the 1990s, particularly, many observers and media articles spoke of compassion fatigue a belief that the public had grown weary of this seemingly intractable problem. A common misconception persists that many individuals who panhandle are not actually homeless, but actually use pity and compassion to fund their lifestyles, making up to $20 an hour and living luxurious lives. This exception to the rule seems more prevalent due to media attention, but in reality, only a few cases exist. Public opinion surveys show relatively little support for this view, however. A 1995 paper in the American Journal of Community Psychology concluded that, "...although the homeless are clearly stigmatized, there is little evidence to suggest that the public has lost compassion and is unwilling to support policies to help homeless people." A Penn State study in 2004 concluded that, "...familiarity breeds sympathy." and greater support for addressing the problem a 2007 survey conducted by public agenda a nonprofit organization that helps leaders and their citizens navigate through complex social issues found that 67% of new yorkers agreed that most homeless people were without shelter because of circumstances beyond their control including high housing costs and lack of good and steady employment more than one-third percent said they worried about becoming homeless themselves with 15% saying they were very worried. 90% of New Yorkers believe that everyone has a right to shelter, and 68% believed that the government is responsible for guaranteeing that right to its citizens. The survey found support for investments in prevention, rental assistance and permanent housing for homeless people. Public Agenda has also concluded, however, that the public's sympathy has limits. In a 2002 national survey, the organization found 74% say the police should leave a homeless person alone if they are not bothering anyone. In contrast, 71% say the police should move homeless people if they are keeping customers away from a shopping area and 51% say homeless people should be moved if they are driving other people away from a public park. Topic. Statistics and demographics. Completely accurate and comprehensive statistics are difficult to acquire for any social study, but especially so when measuring the ambiguous hidden, and erratic reality of homelessness. All figures given are estimates. In addition, these estimates represent overall national averages. The proportions of specific homeless communities can vary substantially depending on local geography. Topic. Annual Homeless Assessment Report to Congress Perhaps the most accurate, comprehensive, and current data on homelessness in the United States is reported annually by the Department of Housing and Urban Development in the Annual Homeless Assessment Report to Congress released in June of every year since 2007. 
The AHAR report relies on data from two sources, single night, point in time counts of both sheltered and unsheltered homeless populations reported on the continuum of care applications to HUD, and counts of the sheltered homeless population over a full year provided by a sample of communities based on data in their Management Information Systems HMIS. Other statistics Total number Over the course of the year October 2009 to September 2010, the 2010 Annual Homeless Assessment Report found that 1,593,150 individuals experienced homelessness most were homeless temporarily. The chronically homeless population those with repeated episodes or who have been homeless for long periods decreased from 175,914 in 2005 to 123,833 in 2007. According to the 2017 AHAR Annual Homeless Assessment Report about 553,742 people experienced homelessness, which is a 1% increase from 2016. Topic. Familial composition According to the NCHWIH report, 51.3% are single males. 24.7% are single females. 23% are families with children. The fastest growing segment. 5% are minors unaccompanied by adults. 39% of the total homeless population are children under the age of 18. Topic. Marital status According to the 2014 NCHWIH report, 24% are married. 76% are single. 67.5% are single males within the single percentage. 32.5% are single females within the single percentage. Topic. Race and ethnicity According to the 2010 SAMHSA report, among long-term stayers persons staying six months or more in emergency shelters in 2008, 56.6% were Black, African American, 28.7% were Hispanic, Latino according to the 2014 NCHWIH report, 42% are African American overrepresented 3.23x compared to 13% of general population, 38% are Caucasian underrepresented 0.53x compared to 72% of general population 20% are Hispanic overrepresented 1.25x compared to 16% of general population 4% are Native American overrepresented 4x compared to 1% of general population 2% are Asian American underrepresented 0.4x compared to 5% of general population Topic. Mental health According to the 2010 SAMHSA report, 26.2% of all sheltered persons who were homeless had a severe mental illness. About 30% of people who are chronically homeless have mental health conditions, according to analyses of data from the 1996 N. Shapisiexiv. Over 60% of people who are chronically homeless have experienced lifetime mental health problems. Topic. Substance abuse According to the 2010 SAMHSA report, 34.7% of all sheltered adults who were homeless had chronic substance abuse issues. About 50% of people who are chronically homeless co-occurring substance abuse problems. According to analyses of data from the 1996 N. Shapisiexiv, over 80% have experienced lifetime alcohol and or drug problems. Topic. Education According to the 1996 Urban Institute findings of the National Survey of Homeless Assistance Providers and Clients UIHAC report, 53% have less than a high school education, 21% have completed high school, 27% have some education beyond high school. Topic. Employment 
According to the 1996 UIHAC report, 44% did paid work during the past month. Of these, 20% worked in a job lasting or expected to last at least three months. 25% worked at a temporary or day labor job. 2% earned money by peddling or selling personal belongings. A 2010 longitudinal study of homeless men conducted in Birmingham, Alabama, found that most earned an average of $90 per week while working an average of 30 hours per week. Topic. Location According to the 2010 SAMHSA report, 71% reside in central cities. 21% are in suburbs. 9% are in rural areas. Topic. Duration According to the 2010 SAMHSA report, Research on shelter use in New York City and Philadelphia concluded that people experiencing transitional homelessness constitute 80% of shelter users. People experiencing episodic homelessness comprise 10% of shelter users. In New York City, transitionally homeless individuals experience an average of 1.4 stays over a three year period, for a total of 58 days on average over the three years. Episodically homeless individuals, on average, experience 4.9 shelter episodes over a three-year period totaling 264 days with an average length of stay of 54.4 days. Data from the 1996 NSHAPC show that about 50% of people who were homeless were experiencing their first or second episode of homelessness, which typically lasted a few weeks or months to one year. Topic. Gender. According to the 2017 Annual Homelessness Assessment Report, 39% are female.60.5% are male.0.4% are transgender 0.2% do not identify as male, female, or transgender. Age According to the 2017 Annual Homelessness Assessment Report, 20.7% are under 18.9.7% are 18 to 24.69.6% are over 24. Topic. See also. Back on my feet. Dignity Village. Frontline Foundation. Homeless Ministry. Homeless Women in the United States. Homelessness and mental health hashtag United States List of tent cities in the United States Mole people Tent city housing Housing insecurity in the United States Eviction in the United States General Poverty in the United States Topic. References Topic. Bibliography Aguirre, Adalberto, Brooks, Jonathan, 2001. City Redevelopment Policies and the Criminalization of Homelessness, a Narrative Case Study. In Kevin Fox Gotham, ed. Critical Perspectives on Urban Redevelopment Research in Urban Sociology, Vol. 6, Emerald Group Publishing Limited, pp. 75-105 American Library Association, Social Responsibilities Round Table, Hunger, Homelessness and Poverty Task Force, N.D. Resources. Retrieved December 13, 2010 Barry, Ellen, A Refugee's Triumph Over Desolation, Boston Globe, December 28, 2003. Baumol, Jim, Editor, Homelessness in America, Oryx Press, Phoenix, 1996. ISBN 0 89774 869 7. Booth, Brenda M., Sullivan, J. Greer, Kogel, Paul, Burnham, M. Audrey. Vulnerability Factors for Homelessness Associated with Substance Dependence in a Community Sample of Homeless Adults, Rand Research Report. Originally published in, American Journal of Drug and Alcohol Abuse, v. 28, No. 3, 2002, pp. 429-452. Blay, D. January 19, 2011. 
Raising the Visibility of Family Homelessness in Washington State Burchard, Kurt, Homeless in Las Vegas, Stories from the Street, University of Nevada Press, 2011 Burchard, Kurt, The Word on the Street, Homeless Men in Las Vegas, University of Nevada Press, 2005 Burke, Carey, Fox, Allison, Martinez, Jose, Hobo Madness Hits Mad. Avenue, Bisman Sues Homeless for Dollar, New York Daily News, January 18, 2007. Center for Social Policy, University of Massachusetts Boston, Hard Numbers, Hard Times, Homeless Individuals in Massachusetts Emergency Shelters 1999-2003, July 2004. Coalition for the Homeless, New York, A History of Modern Homelessness in New York City. Cremaldi, Laura, Cardinal Spends Time with Homeless, Boston Herald, December 26, 2006. Cremaldi, Laura, Homeless Advocates Urge No Diversion of Shelter Funds, Boston Herald, Wednesday, February 14, 2007. Cremaldi, Laura, Champion for Homeless Fights for Life, Boston Herald, Sunday, September 21, 2008. About Richard Weintraub, Director of Homeless Services for Boston, Massachusetts. The article has some modern history of homelessness in Boston. CSP Tech, University of Massachusetts, Boston, Characteristics of Homeless Families Accessing Massachusetts Emergency Shelters 1999-2001, April 2003. Culhane, Dennis, Responding to Homelessness, Policies and Politics, 2001. DeMouse, Neil, Out of the Shelter, Into the Fire, New City Program for Homeless, Keep Your Job or Keep Your Apartment, The Village Voice, New York, June 20, 2006. Dipostino, Todd, Citizen Hobo, How a Century of Homelessness Shaped America, 2003. ISBN 0-226-14378-3 Desjarlais, Robert R., Shelter Blues, Sanity and Selfhood Among the Homeless, University of Pennsylvania Press, 1997. A Particular Study of Homeless People in the Boston Area. Dreyer, Peter, Applebaum, Richard, American Nightmare, Homelessness, Challenge, The Magazine of Economic Affairs, V.34, N.2, March, April 1991, pp. 46-52. Flowers, R. Bari, 2010. Street Kids, The Lives of Runaway and Thrownaway Teens. Jefferson, N.C., McFarland. ISBN 978-0-7864-5663-5. Freeman, Richard B. Hall, Brian, Permanent Homelessness in America, Working Paper No. 2013, National Bureau of Economic Research, Cambridge, Massachusetts, September 1986 Friedman, Donna Haig, et al., Preventing Homelessness and Promoting Housing Stability, A Comparative Analysis, The Boston Foundation and UMass, Boston Center for Social Policy, June 2007. Gatto, Nora, Vincent, Niagara University, Eagle Alumni Magazine, Fall 2006, p. 12. Human Rights Watch, 2010. My So-Called Emancipation from Foster Care to Homelessness for California Youth. Retrieved from https colon slash slash www.hrw.org slash site slash default slash file slash reports slash us 0410 webcover pdf institute for governmental studies berkeley urban homelessness and public policy solutions a one-day conference january 22 2001 Hoke, Charles, Slayton, Robert A., New Homeless and Old, Community and the Skid Row Hotel, Philadelphia, Temple University Press, 1989. ISBN 0-87722-600-8 Rick, buried in obscurity, found dead on Causeway Street in June, his body awaits a nameless final rest, Boston Globe, December 17, 2006. A story about a Beacon Hill church pausing to remember the recently departed homeless. Katz, Celeste, Public Advocate Bill de Blasio to BBH Global, Keep Your Homeless Hotspot Stunt Out of NYC, The New York Daily News, March 13, 2012 Katz, Jessica Alana, Homelessness, Crime, Mental Illness, and Substance Abuse, A Core Population with Multiple Social Service Needs, Department of Urban Planning and Studies, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, June 2003 Keene, J. December 13, 2010. Libraries Welcome Homeless to Community Living Rooms, USA Today Retrieved December 13, 2010 Night, H. January 11, 2010. Library Adds Social Worker to Assist Homeless. San Francisco Chronicle.
Retrieved from http colon slash slash www.sfgate.com slash bay area slash article slash library dash ads dash social dash worker dash to dash assist dash homeless dash three two seven five nine five O dot PHP Cobal, C. Theodore, nineteen ninety eight. Shelter and Society, Theory, Research, and Policy for Nonprofit Housing. SUNY Press. ISBN 978-0-7914-3789-6. Coleman, Thomas L., Psychology on the Streets, Mental Health Practice with Homeless Persons, New York, J. Wiley & Sons, 1994. ISBN 0-471-55243-7 Customer, Kenneth L., Down and Out, On the Road, The Homeless in American History, Oxford University Press, 2003. ISBN 0 19 8 Leader, K. December 1, 2010. Welcoming the Homeless into Libraries. In the Library with the Lead Pipe. Retrieved from http colon slash slash www dot in the library with a lead pipe dot org slash twenty ten slash welcoming dash the dash homeless dash into dash libraries slash Levinson, David, ed. two thousand four. Encyclopedia of Homelessness. Thousand Oaks, California, Sage Publications. ISBN 978-0-7619-2751-8. Lowe, Eugene T. The 13th of December 2016, The U.S. Conference of Mayors Report on Hunger and Homelessness, a status report on homelessness and hunger in America's cities, Washington, D.C., U.S. Conference of Mayors, retrieved 16 September 2017 Massachusetts Coalition for the Homeless, Down and Out Resource Manual, 2005. The Massachusetts Commission to End Homelessness, Report of the Special Commission Relative to Ending Homelessness in the Commonwealth, Boston, Massachusetts, December 28, 2007, January 2008. Massachusetts, Commonwealth of, Housing the Homeless, A More Effective Approach, Governor's Executive Commission for Homeless Services Coordination, November 2003. Morton, Margaret, The Tunnel, The Underground Homeless of New York City, Yale University Press, 1995. ISBN 0-300-06559-0 National Coalition for the Homeless, American Nightmare, A Decade of Homelessness in the United States, December 1989 National Coalition for the Homeless, July 2009. Homes Not Handcuffs, The Criminalization of Homelessness in U.S. Cities. Retrieved December 13, 2010. National Coalition for the Homeless and the National Law Center on Homelessness and Poverty the 9th of January 2006, A Dream Denied, The Criminalization of Homelessness in U.S. Cities PDF, Washington, D.C., Authors, Retrieved 16 September 2017 Nieto G., Gittleman M., Abad A., 2008. Homeless Mentally Ill Persons, A Bibliography Review, International Journal of Psychosocial Rehabilitation, 12 2, O'Flaherty, Brendan, Making Room, The Economics of Homelessness, Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press, 1996. ISBN 0-674-54342-4 Quigley, John M., Raphael, Stephen, The Economics of Homelessness, The Evidence from North America, European Journal of Housing Policy 1 3, 2001, 323-336 Radin, Charles A., On the Street, A Quiet Outreach of Kindness, Little Brothers Lift the Less Fortunate, Boston Globe, December 18, 2006. Rees, Jacob, How the Other Half Lives, 1890. Rossi, Peter H., Down and Out in America, The Origins of Homelessness, University of Chicago Press, 1991. Russell, Jenna, In Their Shoes, To Better Understand the Plight of the Homeless, Harvard Student Takes to the Streets, Boston Globe, August 9, 2009 Ryan, Charles V, Homes Within Reach, Springfield's Ten-Year Plan to End Long-Term Homelessness, City of Springfield, Massachusetts, Mayor Charles V Ryan, January 2007. Sanborn, Josh, Bans Around U.S. Face Challenges in Court, October 10, 2013. Schneider, P. November 17, 2010. Can Remodeled Library Attract Public, Suit Homeless? The Cap Times. Retrieved from http colon slash slash host dot madison dot com slash ct slash news slash local slash govit dash and dash politics slash article underscore b six nine one three oh seven two dash f one c nine dash eleven df dash nine four six four dash oh oh one c c four c o o two e o dot html shut Russell K PhD Professor University of Massachusetts Boston 
Shutt, Russell K., et al., Boston's Homeless, 1986–1987, Change and Continuity, 1987. Shutt, Russell K., Working with the Homeless, The Backgrounds, Activities and Beliefs of Shelter Staff, 1988. Shutt, Russell, K., Homeless Adults in Boston in 1990, A Two-Shelter Profile, 1990. Shutt, Russell K., Garrett, Gerald R., Responding to the Homeless, Policy and Practice, Topics in Social Psychiatry, 1992. ISBN 0-306-44076-8 Shutt, Russell K., Byrne, Francine, et al., City of Boston Homeless Services, Employment and Training for Homeless Persons, 1995. Shutt, Russell K., Feldman, James, et al., Homeless Persons' Residential Preferences and Needs, a Pilot Survey of Persons with Severe Mental Illness in Boston Mental Health and Generic Shelters, 2004. Summer, Heidi, Homelessness in Urban America, a Review of the Literature, 2001 St. Mungo's Organization, UK, A Brief History of Homelessness, Stern, H., 1992. Aimless and Homeless, He Wins Fortune in Court Lawsuit, Library Who Banned Him, Police Who Harassed Him, Wish They Hadn't, to the tune of $250,000. Los Angeles Times Retrieved November 18, 2010. Stuart B. McKinney Act, 42 U.S.C. § 11301, et S.E.Q., 1994. Retrieved December 1, 2010. Stringer, Lee, Grand Central Winter, Stories from the Street, 1st ed., New York, Seven Stories Press, 1998. ISBN 1-888-363-57-6 Shantos, Ruth 2 Excuse me can you spare some change in this economy A socioeconomic history of anti-panhandling laws, 2010 Vissing, Yvonne Out of Sight, Out of Mind, Homeless Children and Families in Small Town America, 1996. Vissing, Yvonne, The Dollar UBTLE War Against Children, Fellowship, March, April 2003 Vladek, Bruce, R., and the Committee on Health Care for Homeless People, Institute of Medicine, Homelessness, Health, and Human Needs, National Academies Press, 1988 Toth, Jennifer, The Mole People, Life in the Tunnels Beneath New York City, 1993. ISBN 1-55652-190-1 United States Conference of Mayors, Hunger and Homelessness Survey, December 2005. United States Department of Health and Human Services, Ending Chronic Homelessness, Strategies for Action, Report from the Secretary's Work Group on Ending Chronic Homelessness, March 2003. University of Vermont, It Starts with a Bed, UVM alums Richard Weintraub and Lyndia Downey lead fight to break cycle of homelessness in Boston, Vermont Quarterly, Fall 2002. U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, 2009. 2009 Annual Homeless Assessment Report to Congress. Washington, D.C., U.S. Government Printing Office. Wagner, David. Checkerboard Square, Culture and Resistance in a Homeless Community Boulder, Westview Press, 1993. ISBN 0-8133-1585-9 Ward, C. 2007. What They Didn't Teach Us in Library School, How the Library Became Heartbreak Hotel. Tomdispatch.com. Retrieved from http colon slash slash www.tomdispatch. Com, post, 174,799, Ward underscore how underscore the underscore public underscore library underscore became underscore heartbreak underscore hotel Woolhouse, Megan, Homes for the Holiday, Housing Agency, Nonprofit Team Up to Help the Homeless, Boston Globe, December 25, 2007. Wortham, Jenna, Use of Homeless as Internet Hotspots Backfires on Marketer, The New York Times, March 12, 2012 Wright, James D., Address Unknown, The Homeless in America, New York, A. de Gruyter, Edition, 3, 1989 Cotty, J., and Ronald, R. 2016. Undermining Housing Affordability for New York's Low-Income Households, The Role of Policy Reform and Rental Sector Restructuring. Critical Social Policy, 36, 2, 265 266. DOI 101177 02610183156241726242 Topic External Links National Coalition for the Homeless National Alliance to End Homelessness Corporation for Supportive Housing National Coalition for Homeless Veterans National Low Income Housing Coalition US Interagency Council on Homelessness US Government United States Department of Housing and Urban Development Site on Homelessness United States Department of Health and Human Services Site on Homelessness 
Homelessness National Center on Family Homelessness National Policy and Advocacy Council on Homelessness USA Housing and Homelessness Research on Issuelab Homeless in U.S., A Deepening Crisis on the Streets of America. BBC. October 8, 2018.